welcome to Glad Rap Channel. <laughs> You think Tyson? No, no, I'll do that before I do. You think he's going to show? There he is, thanks. Your phones are on silent, please. Phones are on silent for press conference. Okay, so good morning ladies and gentlemen, very warm welcome to the Landmark Hotel for this press conference ahead of Saturday night's WBO heavyweight title fight between the champion Joseph Parker and our challenger Huey Fiore. It's a much anticipated fight, it's a fight that's been in the works for a while now but it's here and it is a fight as well that many people are struggling to pick a winner from at this stage. A lot of people building this as a true 50-50 fight and we have both teams with us this morning, team Parker away to my right hand side, Joseph himself of course and his trainer Kevin Barry. To my left we have team Fury, Huey Fury, it's his birthday today by the way, happy birthday Huey. Uh, his uh, trainer and father Peter and his promoter Mick Hennessy and we also have Thomas Grace with us here from YouTube this morning as well. You'll be hearing from all of them in due course. They'll be available at the end for questions from the floor and also for the one-on-ones too, so there'll be plenty of opportunity to speak to all of them. But we're not just here today to talk about the fight itself. We're also here to talk, first of all, about how this fight is going to be seen by people around the world, because Saturday night will be different. Mick Hennessy has made a bold decision to take the fight Parker Fury to the online platform and to put this fight on YouTube. Now, as we all know, the way that people view video and view content over the last 10 years, five years, a couple of years, is changing all the time, really, has changed dramatically. It's no longer the case that you just have to sit in your living room and watch one of the established channels on your TV. You can do that, of course, still, but with the introduction of smart TVs, of laptops, Macs, PCs, tablets, mobile phones, any number of devices, wherever you've got a connection, then you can watch pretty much what you want to watch. And YouTube, of course, is the biggest online provider out there of one and a half billion users. It's the biggest provider of online video content. So whilst it was a bold decision, it was in some ways an obvious decision to partner up with YouTube. And that's exactly what Hennessy Sports are doing 
on Saturday, YouTube being the home of the Hennessy Sports YouTube channel and the boxing channel presented by Hennessy Sports is where you will find this fight on Saturday and more specifically you'll find it at youtube.com parker forward slash fury. Well over 20 countries have signed up for this already, the likes of the USA, Canada, Mexico, Spain, Italy, Argentina, Germany as well. And at this stage, it's 14.99 in the UK and 16.99 in euros in Ireland. Gentlemen, you'll get, you'll get your chance. You'll sell more TV as I fire up. Gentlemen, you'll get your chance. You'll get your chance. Guess what? You can't win. Hey, take another line for me. You will have your opportunity, everybody will have their opportunity to ask questions of everybody on this top table, of everybody on this top table in due course. Now is not the time or place for this. Okay. Hey, and anything you want to fucking do about your bodyguards, come here. I said, who gives a fuck about you anyway? Go on, Snow White. Hey, hey, take a fucking line. You shook my hand. Who gives a fuck about you? Okay, so that was interesting. Um, if we just settle things down a little bit, I'll give us all a few seconds just to uh, restock before we carry on. This is boxing, anything can happen at any time, we know that, that's why we love it. But to return to what I was talking about, this fight on Saturday night, Parker Fury, and the decision that McHennessy has made to take it to the YouTube channel. It's 14.99 in the UK, 16.99 in Euros in Ireland. So let's just hear a little bit about how this decision was made because it is a bold decision, it is a new decision, it is a big kind of breakthrough possibly for the way that boxing is viewed around the world. Uh, and boxing, particularly in the UK at the minute, is, is more available than it's ever been. There's more boxing on TV than there has ever been anywhere. So Mick, if you'd just like to tell us just how you came to, to take this decision. Thanks Andy. The main reason, um, thank, by the way, thanks for your attendance first and foremost. Um, if you look at YouTube, 1.5 billion unique users every month. The biggest video platform in the world. The potential is phenomenal. The next step is live sport at the highest level. And we want to get in early. We've had a lot of you know, stones thrown, thrown at us from different parties, worried parties, worldwide, because people are frightened. This is the future. We're very, very excited by this move. It's a, it's a pioneering move, and with that, we're gonna, we're gonna come under fire, we're gonna come under stick, but it's something, you know, that's where, that's where massive events are gonna end up. They're gonna end up on platforms like YouTube. It's a, it's a brilliant platform. It's, you know, recently we've had, we've heard things going wrong with certain pay-per-views and certain, um, you know, uh, websites and things that things have been done through. But we've actually gone out of our way to choose YouTube, YouTube, the biggest and the best uh, for doing this sort of thing. The payment system is second to none. It's Google Wallet. It can handle any amount of um, numbers thrown at it worldwide without crashing. And um, you know, it, for us, this is this is very very exciting. Um, our, our aim long term with this is to bring the pay per view prices down. A lot of a lot of places now, you're not just paying pay per view money. You're not just paying twenty pounds to watch a fight that's at four or five in the morning. You're also paying your monthly subscriptions, your monthly sports packages, everything that goes with it. We're putting, we're putting a figure on prime time in the UK. As I said, if we get the backing and the numbers and the people start backing it, we will bring those prices down. You won't be paying monthly, monthly figures. You can pick and choose what fight you want, when and where. And, and that's our aim. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope you uh, I hope you like 
you know, what, what we're about to do next Saturday. We've got just to put everyone's fears at rest. We've got a top quality production. Um, we've got the legendary John, John Watts heading up the production for us. Um, and they're actually working with, with a, a company that we, we got put, put on board for the stream as well called Little Box. And it's going to be, you know, there's going to be no problems with it going out. There's going to be no problems streaming it, no problems purchasing it. This is the biggest platform in the world, and, and, and we want to we want to make it clear. You know, people say you can't watch this on television. Of course, you can watch it on television. All smart TVs nowadays are geared up for this. So, for me, we've got a brilliant heavyweight world title fight. It's a 50-50 fight for anyone's money. Two young guns in their prime. Modern day heavyweights, both big fighters, and both putting undefeated records on the line. Is it the biggest fight out there commercially in the heavyweight division? No, we all know that. This is two young fighters trying to make their names and their legacies, and they're about to do that Saturday night. Is it the best heavyweight fight out there? Absolutely. 100% this is the best heavyweight fight out there. This is a fight. You don't know, you don't know the result that's going into this fight. So we've got the best heavyweight title fight. There's lots of fake news out there about tickets and stuff and everything else that goes around it. We're not expecting to sell stadiums out. Of course we're not. These are, these are two young fighters making their name for the heavyweight world title. We laid it out for 10,000. We've, we've done 5,000 and we're, we're looking to try and get as close to 10,000 as possible. But that's, you know, that's not the point. These two, these two Young fighters will build their name in this fight, and then everyone worldwide will know who they are. So, this is a great fight. It's a unique thing. It's great for boxing, what we're doing. So, we'd really appreciate your support to get behind this. As I said, it is, it is uh, in everyone's eyes, it's a massive risk. But, you know, risk, risk takers get rewarded sometimes. So, we're ready to do this. Thanks Mick, and uh, we'll just go now to Thomas Grace of YouTube just to have a quick chat about, about the platform itself and, and how excited he is by the prospect. I'm not sure if this is your first boxing press conference, if, if it is, welcome. Thank you. Um, so, we're all aware of YouTube as a platform of course, but what particularly do you think bringing sport, live sport, to, to, to your platform, what can that really add to, to the viewing experience? Well, so I think YouTube is recognised as being the home of highlights, whether that is the top sporting events in the world will make available official highlights on their YouTube channel and make that available globally and comprehensively. But YouTube, of course, is also a platform for live sport, going back all the way to Red Bull Stratos in 2011, which is still a record-breaking live event on YouTube. But even in the last few months, if we're looking at it more recently, rights holders such as FIFA, UEFA, Formula One, BT Sport with the live stream of the Champions League final and the Europa League final on their YouTube channel. These are major sporting events live on YouTube. And so we're just very, very happy that Hennessy Sport and the organizers have trusted YouTube with this major sporting event, which will be the biggest live heavyweight boxing event ever on YouTube. So we're very, very proud of this partnership. And from the kind of youth aspect of it as well, I mean, technological generations are kind of three, four, five years apart now maybe, and, and what kind of young people are doing is, is very different from what maybe older generations have been up to in the past, and, and it's really important for a sport like boxing to tap into that as much as possible. Yeah, that's right. So YouTube is obviously uh, a platform that skews towards a younger demographic, uh, and I think that that's something that can benefit the sport of boxing. We hope that by streaming this event, live on the Hennessy Sport YouTube channel that we're able to take and help the organisers take the sport, take boxing, take this particular event to a younger audience. Thanks very much Thomas. So on to the fight itself on Saturday night and to the two fighters and the two trainers sitting away to my left and right hand side. Um, I'll start with the the challenger with Huey Fury and, and Peter Fury, but if at any stage you gentlemen need to get involved, excuse me. Okay, 
so Team Fury first of all, as I said right at the start, this, this fight has been quite a long time in the works, Peter, it's been quite a long time coming, it's finally here now, how ready are you? Fantastic count, it's been uh, absolute havoc. Do apologise earlier for the swearing. Uh, when I came in this morning, you know, it's not nice when your promoter say to you, Mick Hennessy, that you know, Higgins is threatening to pull out the fight. He's, you've breached and he wants to run away to New Zealand with the money. So, you know, we hear all this rubbish talk out of his mouth, and, uh, and he comes in here and says, What about the referee? He made a comment regarding in the paper and said, I look Peter Fury in the eyes. And he told me that we was going to get the best of fair play over here. Okay, let's dissect that. This is what I can do as fair play goes. Joseph Parker mutually picked the gloves. The ring checked and approved by both people. The dressing room, everything spot on. That's what I can do. Give the best of fair play. I want my son to win a world title with no hidden agendas. Now, Higgins is basically saying because of the referee, it's not fair. Is he insinuating that I've got the boxing board of control, one of the most respected offici officiated people group in the world boxing, to say, I've got him in my pocket, the bent. I have got no interest in a referee, a judge, or anything else. I'm here to see your son win the world title. And that's what we've been training for. And furthermore, as I understand it from Mick this morning, we've wrote to the boxing, we've wrote to the boxing board of control, and they're looking to apply to and uh, change the game. So all this stupid, silly gossip, talking to other promoters, giving snips of his own words, snips of theirs, you know, I'm not interested in all of that crap. And we're interested in world boxing, and that's for fair play. He did look me in the eyes, and I did look him in the eyes and say, you get the best player. What I can't do is go to the boxing board of control and say, change this, change that, that's up to them. We request it as well. That's all we can do. Have you been a bit surprised at how all of this has kind of blown up a bit in the last few days? Well, I am surprised because we've had, we've had various stages along. I gave my word to David Higgins, and I said, this fight's going to happen. So, you know, first of all, jumping up and down, the money's not in, or the we're not getting paid, the fight's never going to happen. You get paid. You've got paid up front. So, you know, you know, what more can anybody do? They're paid, you know, and they're here. The politics of boxing, the stuff at the back, you know, people get carried away. They're on the fight, that's the end of it. Is this rematch going to get put on? Is he going to back out? Is he this? Is he that? If thoughts don't do anything, we're here, the fight's happening, they're paid, you know, and all these breaches, there are no breaches. And if he thinks he can run off in Timbuktu with the money, good luck to him, because he can't. We know our legal rights, and it's all, it's all bullshit to me. You know, just, I don't know what, what's the matter with, uh, with him, rather, you know, is he unhappy, is he unsteady, is he unhappy with the fact that really he negotiated a fight with Eddie Hearn and didn't think for a million years you would be fighting, and all of a sudden, bang, he's here. Well, he's not the problem, so, like I said, I apologise for this swearing, let's get back to the boxing. I think this is going to be a terrific fight. I prepared Yui for 12 rounds of a tough contest. We're taking nothing away from Joseph Parker. I've always said he's a good fighter. You know, I'm coming from fighting people who we think we know fighting pretty well. So Yui's on a camp where he's prepared for wars. He's been hit a lot, took a lot of punishment in sparring. He's done 12 rounds three times a week, sometimes 15 rounds, one in, one out, up to eight sparring partners. You know, he's been uh, battered, bruised, up and down in sparring. You know, this is a war as far as he's concerned. And um, but look, anything can happen in boxing, and this is what we've prepared for. But we've prepared for a, a very, very tough fight, and one that uh, he was ready for. And I'm looking forward to see a good fight because all the work's done now, and we're just looking forward to see a great fight between us, Mick said.
to a very up and coming young heavyweights, and uh, we'll see on the 23rd of September who goes forward. So, Huey, there's been a lot going on, a lot going on in the background, and you fighters have to try and divorce yourselves from that as much as you possibly can in the in the preparations. Has it been been possible to do that? And how are you feeling? Um, I don't really get involved in the politics side of things. I just leave that up to my team. I know I've got a good team behind me, so I just concentrate on the boxing. At the end of the day, the fight is a fight. So, this is my training camp. It's been the best training camp I've ever been in. Uh, everything's gone so well. Uh, it's been tough, blood, sweat, tears and guts have been put into this. And believe me, on the 21st of September I'm bringing that belt home because I'm super confident in my skills and everything. I put all the hard work in, I'm determined. This is going to be an unbelievable fight. We've got two young, hungry fighters who want it more than anything. It's a matter of who wants it more because I'm willing to die in that ring. So I just can't wait now to get in there and do the job. And is it particularly important of you as well, not just as an individual, but from, from a family point of view, to, to get a Fury name back on that World Championship roster uh, at heavyweight? Because obviously Tyson unified those belts and then he's not able to box at the moment. Yeah, it means well to me. This is what we're in boxing for. We're in boxing to become world champions, not just to become, to unify the division. And I won't stop until I unify the division, one belt at a time. But I'm not looking past Joseph Park. He is a good fighter. I can't take him away from the kid. The kid's a nice, pleasant kid. But when that bell goes, it's strictly business. And that's it. Who wants it more win? But I believe, super confident going into this fight, and I will be victorious on 21st of September. It has been a long time coming. Has it been in any way difficult for both of you uh, to keep peaking, to keep yourself on the simmer, if you like, to, to make sure you're absolutely ready and not, and not overtrained, if you like, by the time you get to fight night? Yeah, it's, it is. It's, uh, it is a fine balance, but that's why I've got my dad. He's my trainer. I wouldn't be here today without him because I always say he's the mastermind behind it all. Because without him, there'd be nothing. So I leave all that side to him. So I'm super confident in my ability, my strength, my fitness, because this is the best I've ever felt. I've had my problems in the past. No one's going to see nothing like the new UE Fury on the 23rd of September. Okay, so well, you chaps have been sitting, waiting patiently, uh, Team Parker. So Kevin, we'll start with you. Pizza went through a lot of things there at the top, and then we got to the fight. But there has been a lot going on around this fight in the background, and you're kind of the buffer between that and him to a large extent. Now, how difficult has it all been? It hasn't been difficult at all because we've just focused on one thing. Yeah, you know, we know that we've got a very big job in front of us on the 23rd. Firstly, let me say, look, I can understand. David Higgins's frustration. Um, he is the promoter, he is our promoter, he's responsible for a contract that we have in place. And I know there are some things in that contract that, uh, that Dave thought having a contract that we would have neutral officials, and I know he's very frustrated reporting back to us that we've got you know a British judge and a British referee. Myself and Joe, personally, we have no concern. We don't worry about who the referee is, who the judge is. Um, let me say to Peter, uh, please don't worry about uh, David running off with the money because we're going nowhere. We've come here for one reason, and that's for Joseph Parker to defend his world title. This is an opportunity to speak to David and tell him to stop threatening to run off. With we're going nowhere, Peter. Um, let me tell you this, you know, we've waited a long time not just to get in the ring with Huey, because this fight's been coming backwards and forwards for six months, but you know, we've waited a long time to campaign in the UK. This is something that we've put a lot of thought into, and the timing for us is perfect right now. Joe's been a pro for a little over four and a half years. He has learned his game, he has won the world title, he's defended it once. Right now, I believe he is at his best, and I was very encouraged and pleased to hear, and as we knew it would be, that Huey is in the best shape of his career. Um, I expect him to be in the best shape of his career because he's fighting one of the most dangerous heavyweights, if not the most dangerous, in world boxing. Um, I have huge belief in my fighter, Joseph Parker. I don't believe in the last two fights that we've seen Joe at his best. We haven't had good training camps, this time we've had an excellent training camp. I think that Joe's 
energy levels, his speed, his stamina, his mental attitude, everything is on point for this fight. And I know we're going to see the very best of Joseph Parker on Saturday night. So Joseph, to you, the man himself, how did that all sound? You in good shape? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm in great shape. Firstly, uh, everyone, thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Team Fury, for being here. Um, it's great to be here in London with my family, friends, um, some of the team back home. Um, like Kevin said, you know, this is the this is the best I've felt, and it's great to hear, like Kevin said from Team Fury, this is the best that he's felt. You know, this is a uh, the boxing is at home where you, think, you know, have to have two warriors come and fight the best. So. Um, if he wasn't at his best, I'd be a bit worried. You know, I want to challenge the best Huey that there is. So, training's gone great. I feel good. Uh, I'm just going to you know, keep sharp until fight night. And, um, I'm looking forward to getting in the ring and, and putting on a great uh, performance. The build-up's been interesting, though. You, you thought it would be in New Zealand. Uh, now you've had to travel over here. Um, there has been a lot of things that have been discussed over the last few days. We've gone through most of them. Such as the referee, how, how difficult is it, or easy is it for you, just to just to just shut out the noise, really? Oh, it's very easy, and the reason I say this is because I have a great team behind me who deals with all the noise. Um, my job is to focus on boxing, training, and being in great shape, and that's all I focus on. So there's not there's not many distractions coming my way, and I feel like I better. Um, I'm mentally and physically in great shape, so there's there's no excuses. Okay, so just a final word from from both of you, just to to finish with Huey. Firstly. From you, what are we going to see on Saturday night? Let's have a prediction. I'm knock him out. I'm super confident. Train for. I'm with hard aspiring. And I believe I'm going to knock him out. Joseph? Yeah, same here. I think I'm going to knock him out. I don't know. I'm not sure what round. Probably between the round of one and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to knock him out. And then we're going to get up and be gentlemen and, and be friends after the fight. But when it's fight time, it's going to be business here. I'm here really, I'm here to put on a great performance and I'm going to dominate. Okay, so we'll now take some questions uh, from the floor. Any questions you have, just... Uh, Sorry, can I just fall down? Just one thing that Peter said. I've no idea why Dave Diggins come in with that outburst because I spoke to him this morning. I told him that the Board of Control wanted to talk to him to re resolve this situation. Thinking back, he said to me, we sent him the numbers. He said, I'll talk to him after the press conference. I asked him to, to, to ring the, the board now. That there, in my opinion, was either his 15 minutes of fame or he's pissed up. One of the two. God knows why he'd done that. There's no need for it. Okay, so any questions we now have from the floor? They will all be available for one on one interviews afterwards as well. Uh, and there'll be some photos too, of course. But uh, any questions? Um, it made it very interesting, but nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm here. He's my promoter, and I'm not really sure what that was, at, what that was about. But I'm focused on being here. Being, um, I'm just focused on fighting. So nothing to do with me. Really. Was he drunk? I don't know. Let's ask him. Was he, where is he? <laughs> he's in drunk. He's here today too. Can I ask each of the protagonists, do you think this is the toughest opponent you have yet faced, either one of you? We start with Joseph. I think uh, every opponent brings different challenges, and I feel like uh, this will be, it will be the, one of the toughest fights I've had in, in terms of, you know, he's got a great team behind him, he's uh, got a different awkward style, so I'm looking forward to you know, the challenge that he's going to bring in terms of the style that he has. Yeah, 100%. This is going to be uh, uh, new styles, but to be honest with you, I've had the whole hard sparring in the bank, but it's going to be a tough fight, and I believe I'm 100% confident winning it. Mick, what's your explanation of the uh, appointment of the officials, and do you think you have left yourselves open to uh, question having a, a British referee? No, not at all. Yeah, in, all in all contracts, um, it's between the WBO and the local commission, and in all contracts, there's the local commission that will override anything that's agreed between the promoters. So it's it's it's, it's down to you know it's, it's down to the governing bodies. We've got no sway over that. I, 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 th I think if you know about boxing, it's a silly question. 
Well, the WBO has been quite vocal in, in terms of um, questioning the neutrality. Well, they work with the British Boxing Board and Control on a regular basis, so they should know each other's rules, shouldn't they? Okay. Right, well, that's the photos now, probably, first of all, and then break off for the one on one interviews. Can I get the top table Any more questions? Me, please. Thank you. 